I'm going to show a quick foot retracking exercise that I give to a lot of clients. Most of us in some point in our life have had an ankle sprain or two or ten and that causes the ankle almost all the time to roll outwards this way and you have a compensation that your brain does rather than leave your foot rolling out sideways because it doesn't feel right just walking on the edge and that is to externally rotate your hip or your knee or both and that allows the foot to fall more that way and you'll see some clients will show you this one foot out other clients will show you the other and some show both right and this is really a long-term compensation for a stuck ankle that never got unstuck. What's supposed to happen when you walk is that you roll through the ball of your big toe when you come forward that way, right? And that should stay contacting as the very last thing until you bring your foot forward. With an old ankle sprain, you'll get some version of this and that big toe never contacts the floor completely. And so to relearn how to do that, I have a very simple exercise. You're going to start with your feet in neutral, which is not out here, not here, but actually pointed straight forward, ankles under knees, under hips. And you're going to bring one foot forward just so that the toes of the back foot are equal with the heel of the front foot. You're going to bring your weight onto the back heel. The idea here is that from your pelvis up, everything floats forward and back without tilting or moving sideways or shifting, right? And so my goal is to bring the weight from my back heel up onto my front foot and to have that track smoothly in a nice forward motion and not skip over each joint that needs to bend in the back leg. And so to do this properly, what I need to do first is bend the back knee and the back big toe. And that allows me to keep contact with the floor with the back big toe, right? And so I learn and relearn how to roll through that big toe. I'll just have clients do this nice and easy, smooth, shifting forward, shifting weight back trying to keep it from being a side to side motion, try not to be unbalanced. And half the time I'll give this something that looks super simple because I've been doing this for years and I'll give this to a new client and they just can't like balance because the intrinsic muscles of the feet are just not working properly. My right ankle was beat up about seven years ago. I'm probably less smooth on this side. I can feel a little bit of a diagonal shift happening so I could do more homework on my own. And just coming forward and back, like a set of 10 a day, nice and smooth, preferably in front of a mirror so that you can really see that you're smoothly doing it, can really retrain the foot so that when you take a step and roll through, it actually contacts the floor properly and all of the biomechanics of your step go straight up and you float through each stride as opposed to stomping and falling into each stride. Okay, I'm going to have Carl try this exercise for the first time and I'm partly doing it so that you can see that if you don't know what this feels like, it's actually a lot harder than it looks. I made it look easy because I've been doing it for years. So the first thing I notice uh, looking at his feet is that his right foot is a little externally rotated compared to the left. So I want you to bring your toes in a little bit. That's good. Okay. I also notice that when he does that, his upper torso tilts a little bit to the right. We would work on that in session, in a rib cage session, but that's not what we're talking about today. So now I want you to bring your left foot forward a foot length so that your left heel is where your right toes are. Just straight forward. A little bit, maybe a half inch. Yeah, good. Okay, great. So now all I want you to do is put your weight into the back heel on the right and notice 
that your instinct without realizing it was then to turn the foot out again. So bring your right heel out just a smidge. Yep, there you go. Okay. And now I want you to try and shift everything from the back foot to the front foot, starting with bending the back knee and then the back big toe and coming forward onto your toe bed, keeping contact with the ball of the big toe. Yep, good. Now try to shift back slowly, keeping that heel from falling in because we want, yep. <laughs> And now try to come forward again. Notice that he's got to move diagonally with the upper body to his left to make this work. We want that to be straight, fall back. I'm gonna come in frame now and help him. <laughs> so, come forward, come back. Forward. There we go. Now it's getting a little smoother. And what do you feel in your ankles and feet in terms of stuff that's maybe firing weird or feeling tired doing this? It's a lot in my right hip. Yeah, okay. That's That'll do. Yeah. So note that if somebody's coming and complaining about hip flexor stuff, that might be the source of it, his big toe not tracking properly and potentially his subtalar joint also being a little stuck. There, that's a little smoother. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, definitely in fearing. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a distinct want to move away and not really trust that big toe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's really happening to you every step is mm -hmm. that you're slightly speed skating to avoid mm -hmm. having to Feel that joint contact the floor. That's better. Yeah. Switch sides. Now make sure that right heel doesn't. Yep. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, that's a little smoother. Yeah. That looks nice. Even here. This is lifting up when you're going backwards. So bring mm. that in and just keep it there. Mm. Nice, there we go. And so a set of 10 on each side would really just help build up the intrinsic muscles of his feet and have them tracking more smoothly in gait, in running, in walking climbing stairs, et cetera, et cetera. Cool, thank you. Yeah, thank you.